Podcast. Welcome to another amazing edition of UPSS Mathematics. This is where we make mathematics your best friend. I want to start this edition with a series of questions. Firstly, how possible it is that a Nigerian artist will win a Grammy in the next edition of the Grammy Awards? Will Chelsea Football Club emerge champions in the next edition of the UEFA Champions League Finals? Hmm. What is the probability that Mr. Ander will become the president of this country in the next presidential election? I believe you have different answers to these different questions. Sometimes we are allowed to represent our answers to questions in numbers, especially when it has to do with the likelihood of the occurrence of an event, and that is called probability. In this class, we'll be treating probability and we'll be talking about experimental probability and theoretical probability. We will move on to mutually exclusive events and non-mutually exclusive events. Stay with me in this class as we examine different factors in probability. Thanks, Paul. Probability is the likelihood of the occurrence of an event. This can be expressed as a fraction between zero and one. Or better still, it can also be expressed as a percentage. Between 0 and 1, we have endless numbers of fractions. For 0, it is an impossible event or an event that is impossible to happen. 1 has certainty. Between 0 and 1, we have an even event. It's either it happens or not. A 50-50 chance of happening. So, we say it is even. Events less than half are regarded as unlikely events. Example is 1 over 4 or 0 0.25. And events greater than half are regarded as likely events. Examples are 3 over 4 or 0 0.75. In general, we have it that the probability of the occurrence of any event is given as the number of required outcomes over the total possible outcome. Now, we will go to different forms of probability. There are different forms of probability, but for this lesson, we will consider only the experimental probability and the theoretical probability experimental probability and the theoretical probability. For experimental probability, it uses the outcome or result of previous events to forecast or determine the results or outcome of events that are yet to occur. Now, experimental probability are not real and it's not the true assessment of probability. Theoretical probability, on the other hand, is the probability based on equally likely outcomes in different events. It is real and it is more accepted than the experimental probability. Let's see how to calculate questions using experimental probability and the theoretical probability. Now, the first question says that the third eye is taught once, what is the probability of obtaining a 4, a 7, a factor of 6, and lastly, a prime number? First of all, we must realize that this question is a theoretical probability question because we are not relying on the results of previous events. Now, let's talk about a feather. A feather is a cube that has a number engraved on each of its sides. And because it has six equal sides, 
it has numbers 1 to 6. Each of them has 1 over 6 as the probability of occurrence because they occur just once in the total 6 times or 6 possible um, outcomes. Okay, let's see how to tackle the first question. How possible it is? Is it to have a 4? Now, out of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, we have just one 4, so the probability of getting a 4 is 1 over 6. A 7. There is no 7 in a die, so the probability of having a 7 is impossible, or it's 0. How do I get a factor of 6? The factors of 6 are 1, 2, 3 and 6. And if I do my counting, they are 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Yes. The 4 numbers out of 6. So I simply write it as 4 over 6. I can break it down to give me 2 over 3. Lastly, how do I get a prime number? The probability of getting a prime number. How many prime numbers do we have? Two, three, five. Three numbers out of six. So the probability of getting a prime number should be three over six, which is one over two. All right, let's move up to the next question. In an experiment, a die is thrown 500 times and the outcomes are recorded below. And of course, the outcomes are in a table. What is the probability of getting a 5, a multiple of 3, and lastly, an even number? But let's start with the probability of getting a 5. We've said before that probability is the ratio of the required outcome to that of total possible outcome. In this case, the number 5 is thrown a total of 80 times. So, that tells us that the probability of getting a 5 is 80 over 500. This can be broken down to 4 over 25. The next question says, how do we get a multiple of 3? The multiples of 3 from 1 to 6 are 3 and 6. And using their outcomes, we have it that the probability of getting a 3 or a 6 should be probability of getting a 3 plus that of the 6 over the total outcome. So this gives us 88 plus 82 all over 500. Eventually, we have it as 17 over 50. Lastly, let's consider the probability of getting an even number. Our even numbers here are 2, 4, and 6 with different outcomes. So what we do, we add their outcomes together over the total possible outcome, which is 500. That gives us 81 plus 85 plus 82 over 500. So our final answer, 31 over 50. Now that you have a good idea of what probability is, I believe you can answer my questions now. So, will a Nigerian artist win a Grammy in the next edition of the Grammy Awards? We have a number for that probability now. Is it? How possible it is that the Chelsea Football Club of England will emerge champions in the next edition of the UEFA Champions League? Also, will Mr. Ander become the president of this country in the next general elections? <laughs> in the next class, we'll be going to something more different, something more exciting. Until then, be a good student. Thanks for watching and bye for now.